tonight because I am running for school board. I'm running for school board because for 29 years of public education, I encourage my students to step up to the plate and engage in the political process. It didn't matter if they were Republicans, it didn't matter if they were Democrats, they needed to engage in the political process. When I uh, retired, my students came to me and said, my former students and what were my current students, said I have to engage in the political process myself. At that point, I decided to run for school board because as a teacher I've impacted students. And school board's all about students. It's all about students. It's not people that are wizard. It's about the students. They came to me and said, engage with them. They are, contrary to what we hear on social media, my students are the people that are running my campaign. I have students as treasurer. I have students as uh, my campaign manager. I do not hire political pundits and spinners to do the job. Thank you. Question one. We all know about official policy stances versus the nod and wink that superintendents and or trustees give about contentious policy issues. You have all been asked at other sessions about charter schools and transformation zones. Do you support them or not and why? We need to know where you stand, but we want to go a little bit beyond the yes, no, and ask about EPISD's District of Innovation designation. The designation undermines protections around which people have worked over decades, involving student-teacher ratios, non-certified teachers, lower pay, etc. Do you support renewal of this designation why or why not? We have three minutes. All right. Uh, I don't know if the question is about charter schools or about you innovation. Can answer about charter schools, but then go beyond. Everyone in the El Paso community values education. I can understand why parents want the best education for their students. I don't believe in charter schools, but they should be able to exist. EPISD has to provide a product that's going to get the students to where the parents want them. That's where that issue stands. I am against uh, ceding sovereignty to uh, charter schools. The district in and of itself should not cede their sovereignty, but they cede their sovereignty with the board members and everything else, so it seems commonsensical that they're going to cede their sovereignty to that. Regarding the District of Innovation, I hope I answered that question. Guys, at any time I have, you can call me. It doesn't matter if you're from the Coronado District or from the Franklin District. We're not here for our individual sectors. We're here for the whole district. We need to understand that. Um, regarding the uh, District of Innovation, the innovation idea was brought upon a couple years ago based on several ideas. One of the ideas that brought the School of Innovation into effect was the idea that they had to keep having attendance hearings. They had to continually have attendance hearings on kids that were under the 90% attendance ratio. So one of the things they're bringing in here is this attendance issue. You don't want to have, if someone meets an 88% attendance ratio, they would have to have an attendance hearing. So they brought the School of Innovation in so they wouldn't have to follow that for giving credit to students. You still have to have uh, the state 90 days, but for credit. So if someone was getting a 98 in a history class, but they missed more than their 90%, then they would have to go to an attendance appeal hearing and they would have to do some additional work. The School of Innovation kind of got us away from that. The second thing they did is that the school semesters were off balance. And the state, because of the tourist industry, I understand, I don't know if that's a fact, they wanted to start school after uh, Memorial Day or Labor Day, Memorial Day. 
uh, Labor Day, yes it is, okay? They wanted to start school. So what it did is it shortened that first semester because the first semester ends in December. So they wanted to be able to start school earlier like they did this year. They wanted to balance off the semesters because it's really tough when you're taking AP classes, et cetera. Can I three minutes up already? 12 seconds. 12 seconds. The other issue is the dual credit teachers. It's hard to get teachers that have master's degrees in their subject area to teach. So the idea was saying, hey, we don't have to have necessarily a certified teacher. I'm ignoring you out. Certified teacher uh, to teach that class that you can give someone that has a master's degree but not a certified teacher. <laughs> The next question is a tough one. All right. It is this. <clears throat> Over more than a decade, EPISD exhibited dishonesty and corruption, stemming in part from lack of trustee oversight and leading to gubernatorial political appointees in charge of the board and previous work experience about candidates and incumbents. <clears throat> Among keywords for our elected representatives, we want trustworthy, ethical and accessible people making decisions on our behalf. What claims and behaviors do you bring to this candidacy that could become sources of embarrassment, <coughs> shame, or pride in the future? Tell us now before the media uncovers it. Three minutes. I have nothing that will bring this district shame. Uh, I will uh, fight for the students, I will fight for the teachers, I will make things transparent. I've been out on the canvassing trail, and if you've never canvassed before, I recommend you go out and canvass, knock on doors and talk to people. Everyone's concerned, everyone thinks the district is a mess. There are a lot of issues here. And perhaps one of the issues is we don't have a real strong newspaper to get the facts out. We got people that want the position more than they want to help the students that they're trying to defend. People want it as a stepping stone to the next level of government. I will tell you right here today that I will serve four years and I will give every ounce of energy that I have to get the job done. When I was out on the campaign trail just yesterday, I talked to a person that said, why do you come to my door every four years? Which is very sad. And I can understand why there's apathy in El Paso. I always thought, you know, go out and reach the community, have town halls, meet the PTSAs. Don't just have town halls in your area. Encourage other district members to have town halls and show up to their town halls. Show up to PTSA, PTA meetings, and just listen. You don't have to be the star performer because board members have to listen more than they have to talk. And all I hear board members doing is talking. Then I decided, in order to keep this idea of transparency alive, I think I've answered the question, so I'm going off a little bit on a tangent. I'm going to go out twice a week to people in the El Paso district and knock on their doors and say, I'm not running for office. What do you think of what's happening in EPISD? I live in the house that I put on my application. I've lived there for 30 years, 29 years. I've taught ethics class. I think ethics class is a very important thing to teach. I think people have to do what's right and not what gives them glory or fame. Or how much time do I have left? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Uh, so I assure you that no amount of nerve is going to find anything that I have done wrong that's going to give a passive life. Thank you. Of course I want to use it. There's a lot of issues at hand here in the district. When I go door to door talking to people, the first thing I have to say is you need to have an educator that knows what they're doing on the board. An educator is going to provide something that a businessman or someone else is not able to provide. They're going to have knowledge about educational policies. 
give you an example. EPISD spends a million dollars on a year on a project called Engage to Learn. All engaged to learn because I was told when I retired that I should go and re uh, market a product that we had before and then sell it to school districts because you can become very wealthy that way. Engaged to learn, all it is, is what service learning was in the past. Before that, it was cooperative learning. Before that, during the era of my father and his education, it was called teaching because everyone knows that if the kids are engaged in the classroom, they're going to learn more. If the board is engaged, they're going to be able to protect the students.